Calvin Robinson, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Now, Calvin, there are many reasons to be afraid of artificial intelligence. Does it frighten you? I'm not frightened of artificial intelligence, but I am very, very weary of it. So I, I used to be a computer scientist. I used to be a programmer developer. I used to teach computer science. Um, so technology is my background. And we used to teach how to develop AI, actually. Well, not true AI, not thinking machines, but algorithms that learn from human beings. And that's the key to what we're seeing in the AI that that's coming out at the moment, especially these language-driven programs, that they're just learning algorithms. So the more we put into them, the more they take out or the more they take on board and the more they develop. So if we don't use them, actually, they don't become, they don't, they don't become very much at all. Uh, so there's, there's an element there of personal responsibility and human responsibility. But the moment we reach true AI, it will be too late to be afraid anyway. Because all of our systems, all of our infrastructure is, is plugged into the matrix, so to speak. You know, everything is either online or electronic. So our entire way of being in the Western world is, is run by machines. I know it's the a machines take over, too late for us to be afraid. Well, I, I know it's a very complex field, but, and I didn't know you actually have an, a background in AI. I'm interested in your, your spiritual take on this, being a deacon from the Free Church of Britain. But can you, without going into too much detail, which would take all night anyway, can you explain, having taught AI um, in your past, how, to, how it works? Give us a little insight. Basically, it's just problem solving. So the very, very fundamental structure of AI is a yes, no tick box. It, it works down a tree of yes and no's. It says, is this the answer to this? Yes give it. If it's no, go down to the next one. Is this the answer? No, go to the next one. And it keeps checking and checking and checking. That's basically how it works. Of course, it's, it's much more complicated than that. But it's just about solving problems. It's about, a, it's an algorithm. It's not thinking and it's not working things out really and truly. It's just going by what it already knows. So it's a culmination of knowledge, but it's also developing and learning as, as we put data into it. So there's two, two sides to that. But it but, is developing. On the spiritual front. Well, let, let, let's get to the spiritual front in a minute because I just want to dwell on this. I mean, it, it, is, yeah. uh, it, is, it does seem to be learning some things. I mean, there is a very real possibility that AI could one day commit crimes. I mean, for example, there was an, there was an example recently where uh, ChatGPT was asked by a journalist mm. to uh, describe the moment when James Joyce met Vladimir Lenin. Now, you don't have to be a historian to know that those two men never met, but ChatGPT made it up anyway. So why would artificial intelligence make something up like that? Well, it, it can never, it, that's a good question, because it can never, never truly create. It can never make something original. It can only take what has already been done and elaborate on it and twist it. So it can only take knowledge that is already in existence. And this is one of the reasons that it can never create true art, because it can, it can look at art that has been created and try and do something similar to it, but it can never do anything original, unique, or new, because it doesn't think like that, it, because it doesn't think, really. Uh, but in, in, in order to, make a, to commit a crime, it would have to have boundaries lessened. And we, as the creators, we as the programmers, set the boundaries for AI. And machines like rules they don't like to break rules so as long as we are firm with our rules and firm with those boundaries we should be okay for the time being 